I'm Mad Cat. And this is Wayne. And welcome to Dark Souls 2 Then and Now. Today we will be looking at the undead crypt. Not to be confused with the Grave of Saints, despite them both being big holes in the ground full of corpses. <laughs> yeah, very true. And then a, a, not really a, a saint here, I guess. You know, we've got a we have a king buried here. We've got yeah. Well, I guess you could have saint ahead. You know, you see that message every now and then. But yeah, yeah but, it's, so uh, uh, first we have another lift. You know, another lift. Little... I think that's our last lift of the game. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it feels. Oh, there's a big one at the end. Though. Oh no, no, that you know, the there's one. one more lift. Oh, and here is uh, old. <laughs> here is the scholar himself again. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of is a lot of words, a lot of jibber jabber about the nature of the curse and what it is to be human and hollow and all that. Yeah. Uh, I have I have to wonder those of you you know you know watching this playing along and everything, how much of you get into get into this kind of thing? Are you just wanting to just move on with the story, just kind of ignore this guy, or do you actually kind of you know just listen into everything he says and? You actually role play it seriously and all that. Well, you Let's can't see. ignore the story. You can't mm -hmm. continue on with the story and ignore the guy because this this guy's Captain Exposition. Right. You know, <laughs> he, he basically spells out the plot. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I meant more uh, just a yeah. You, you listen to him and everything, and just go uh, cool story, bro, and move on with move on with your life or your unlife, as the case your may unlife. be. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, it's probably Shaquar that mentions that that Aldia was uh, Vendrick's brother, which or uh, I, th I think it was her anyway. It probably been, that uh, cat knows a lot of things. She knows everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, by the time this one goes up, we'll have our fourth uh, NPC video, and uh, Shaquar, after you've done the four old soul old one souls, will tell you everything about them. Which how does she know? <laughs> She's a very old cat. <laughs> I think it's a shame that in Dark Souls 3 that there, there isn't a talking cat. I was starting <laughs> to think it was becoming a Dark Souls thing. You know, you have Alvina, then you have mm. uh, Charlecroix. Charlecroix. Mm. And, and then nothing, I guess. Then nothing. Uh, that's sad. <laughs> it's not even a talking... There's no talking animals at all in Dark Souls 3. Oh, man. Well, since uh, Mog is the only one, since I, I'm not capable of doing the Scholar of the First Sin footage, Mog is going to be going, uh, is going to be going along the Aldia route. So just saying yes to the things that he says and showing off the special events near the end of the game. He doesn't half the, the talk a lot, does he? Yeah, it's it's funny. The first time we recorded this one, I, le I accidentally left in about three minutes of. A footage of uh, Mog just staring at him while she double checked a a wiki to see make sure we didn't lose anything in the in the in the plot, and I didn't even notice because you know the waveforms because of the, the fire was was there you know threw me off and it's like you know five minutes of of Aldia exposition yeah sounds legit, <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, me coming in at the, the end of the uh, Shrine of Amana video you can tell because I still have my silly uh, skull skull hat. And, and his bonfire isn't right obvious. It's uh, under the stairs. Right. I yeah, think this yeah, is Mark basically because point... Aldia couldn't manifest under the stairs without looking ridiculous. Right. <laughs> there is a tiny room you can appear in later. And I think if you do the... Uh, whichever the fourth uh, bonfire you touch is, is wherever he appears purpose. last. I know there's at least one in a fairly small room, which is just hilarious. <laughs> Now we're doing a little uh, Darkest Dungeon reference here. You know, Mog and I are both fans and uh, stream it. So I decided to go with a Crusader, you know, all miracles, you know, kind of get some uh, get, get some miracles to represent his abilities and everything. And, of course, one big great sword to, to smite the uh, the undead with. Or the okay. un unholy with, if we're going with that one. I was to say, the, the Darkest Dungeon Crusader doesn't have a shield. Right. Well, I had to... We have some artistic license, you know. <laughs> So this, this Torch look. Hollow, he is not mm -hmm. your friend. Yeah, he acts like your friend. You can lock on to him, but he won't attack you, even if you accidentally hit him. But he is not your friend. Right. And you'll I, see I, I why thought... he's not your friend very shortly. Right. Well, I, I guess the actual reason he's not your friend is near the uh, 
is near the end of the video because the the the, per, the tip you get is not a joke. You know, li listen listen to the guy when he warns you about light. But first, <laughs> we have uh, we have some new f new friends in uh, Scholar. Yep, you can't the, just walk your way there's through. There's two cyan knights and one of the swing door shield knights. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even catch. I didn't even think about it that way. But you know, Mog made the you know <laughs> kill that torch hollow. Uh, made the comparison to it's like a guy like a living uh, saloon door. You know, uh, and that's that is pretty great. I, I can't see it any other way now. <laughs> They make sure both of the CN knights are those halberdiers, you know, here to make it even harder to deal with them if they're in those, uh, the, the, if they're guarding those little uh, corridors. So you can just lure them out and then try to get around for a backstab. Like so. So the spear backstab is brutal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's awesome, but yeah, very. <laughs> I guess you have, you know, make sure you get uh, you know your arm day to be able to lift a knight that big you know up and up with a spear. <laughs> yeah, take a, a warmth break. Yep, warmth. Uh, really nice little spell for extending your restus. Yeah, yeah. We we talked about. I don't know if it was. I think it was in the footage we didn't uh, we lost last time with the uh, with the the, the 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 issues we had last time. But I, I talked to uh, Damag about that because I never seriously used a warmth. And then she pointed out that if you're in a longer, you know, a long dungeon run, it's a good way to keep your keep your Estus up. Whereas you know, I'm like you know, at this point in the game, bonfires are frequent enough that you usually don't run out. But it's all a it's it's, it's all you know. Your mileage may vary on that one. It's like do you end up taking more risks and use more Estus? Do you play very defensively, take twice as long in the dungeon, but don't need as much uh, healing? You know. Or do you get unlucky and, and get owned anyway? <laughs> I say I use it. I said I use warmth basically as little base camps. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense, yeah, because it, it lasts for it lasts for so long. And at that time, I actually I see the guy coming up behind me, but it doesn't register he wasn't one of the guys with the torch until it was too late and got that uh, hit in. But I sped up this footage because. Uh, we have the we have these uh, the, the three witches. There, I mean, three in this version, two in Scholar, and they are uh, the Lady uh, Witches, I think they're called, and they have the ability to use all four magic types from their the Sorceress uh, staves, which I think when you get to use them, you can't use Pyromancy with them, but otherwise you can use the other three with it, which is you know pretty darn cool. Which I would say, if I if I had been intending to keep doing hexes and stuff, I would have. Uh totally farmed these mm -hmm. right because ultimately uh, that's it, what put me off the whole hexing thing was having to keep changing my catalyst and you know mm -hmm. making sure i had the right one equipped at all times right yeah the fact that they they split up split them up between staff and uh, chime hexes i i ended up uh, when and that's something that's uh, something that you all might want to weigh in too you know how you balance that out because what i ended up doing was pretty much just only having only having one type of hex attuned. Like I'd either go with uh, dark weapon and dark orb, and only go with sta uh, only go with staves, or use uh, resonant soul and uh, uh, scraps of life, for example, and, uh, go, and go with a go with the chime hexes, and never mix and match. Because at that point, you're not really a dedicated hexer. That's more of you're doing some other kind of magic and using hexes on the side for your convenience. You know, you're giving up some some versatility in the in the magic. You know, the the, the spell list to make it easier for make it easier on you. I kind of prefer how they did the hexes in three and Demon Souls, where mm -hmm. it's basically they're still normal sorceries, pyromancies, or miracles, but they do dark damage. Right, right. So yeah, that, I think that makes a lot more sense, right? Yeah, and uh, and you mean uh, Dark Souls One, right? No, Not, uh, Demon, Demon Souls, Souls and Dark Souls Three. There aren't any hexes in Dark Souls One. Apart, well, there are the dark spells in the DLC, but they count as sorceries. Okay, okay, that's what you mean. Uh, I, well, uh, Demon Souls didn't have uh, dark damage; it was all uh, magic, uh, fire, or uh, or uh, lightning. No, it's, it still had. Or no, there, there wasn't lightning. It was uh, magic, fire, and. Um... No, it, it had it had hexes, though, as a thing. Oh, okay. Maybe they weren't doing dark damage, but they were a separate class of spell. But you still cast; they still counted 
as source for his old miracles as well. Right, right. Oh, you mean like with uh, the with uh, the, the witchcraft, right? Yeah. With, um, with yeah, Uria. Mm -hmm. Okay, I go, I go what you mean now. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait a minute, hexes. <laughs> But yeah, with that done, and yeah, only two of them to deal with in this time. And I, I, I was kind of thinking on uh, Mog's footage it looked uh, too easy, but the the problem was that it's only in New Game Plus, where they or in Cycle Two, where they put in some of those uh, big, of the Saloon Door Shield guys to block your way, so you have to get shelled by the magic, you know, in order to actually get to them. And with all of the hits that even with even with the Great Magic Barrier reducing the damage. Uh, the hits still count against your durability, so you end up getting the, the getting the relatively fragile uh, dragon ring broken there. Yeah, it, having your your armor break isn't too common unless you're getting hit with acid in this game, but it's very easy to break the more powerful rings because they have really low durability. I know I was watching uh, NG stream or not stream, but LP Dark Souls Two, and they had the same thing uh, happen. In uh, you, you can resist, you can get a lot of a lot of fire damage and iron keep. But eventually, yeah, if you if you stay in the flames too long, it will break your stuff. <laughs> yeah, so this is why Torch Hollow is not your friend. When when this guy says mm -hmm. do not produce light, he is one hundred percent serious. Yes. I'm welcome in this place. You can tell from Agadane's voice he's pretty serious all the time anyway, but he is very serious about this one. You know, he will he will just attack you immediately. And as soon as you start fighting him, the uh, the grave wardens will jump in. But not vice versa. If you kill them, he won't. He doesn't really yeah, care. Yeah, he doesn't much. really care if you beat up his bodyguards. <laughs> so we'd end up talking with him. He sells the. He's another merchant. That's uh, he, well, he is a merchant. That, that's that itself is kind of cool. But it's another one that's different in uh, in the original versus uh, scholar. That uh, yeah. The, the, here's a big one: is that I switched my armor to the insolent armor from uh, in, in the game. And it, it he, Agde no longer sells it in Scholar. What they're supposed to do is, uh, well, Mog will show it off shortly, but there are new enemies, the new red phantoms in, uh, in Scholar that drop it instead. And that's what they're supposed to do. You're supposed to farm them for it. Because you can't so really Needles farm them because they're each a single spawn. Oh, are, are they? Okay. Yeah. Well, in that case. <laughs> yeah, we talked earlier about the Lion Warrior headdress and how... You know, the scholar made that item almost impossible to get, whereas it made a lot of other items easier. And I guess that's another example, whereas where they just normally scholar made a lot of items more accessible. But there's a couple that they they went the, the opposite way, and that must be one, the insolent armor must be one of them. Which is a shame because it's kind of cool. It's one of the few that has that you know uh, armor and surcoat uh, uh, you know design. Ah, those halberd guys. <laughs> Such a pain. The surcoats were both for identification and for just keeping the sun off your armor. Hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I've never tried walking around in the sun in in metal, wearing metal, but I can imagine it wouldn't be too pleasant. <laughs> and this is an easy one. I, I missed this one my first time through too. It wasn't until I came the other way. And, and then you noticed, can see hey, them. This, see mm -hmm, the glowies exactly. when you're across the other side. Right. And then you can drop down and then drop down again and go up the ladder to get to it. And in Scholar, Scholar and Jerk there's move, a friend yep. up the ladder. Right. <laughs> About halfway up the ladder, there's mm -hmm. a friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what uh, Mog's pausing for, I guess, to kind of try to pan the camera up and... Luckily, she had enough... Well, no, I, I keep seeing that word, and I don't mean it. You know, she had, with foresight, she had the Ring of Giants on, I had enough poison, I could knock off the ladder for... Uh, get knocked off the ladder by getting hit by him. And we have... A Fire Seed and the Crushed Eye Orb. So we pull up the description here, and, yeah, basically what happened is that the Black Eye Orb from Dark Souls 1... I've seen better days. You know, somebody smashed it, and the pieces are here in that uh, that treasure chest. And but it, it has the works, same purpose. So. It has the same purpose is to take you to the world of somebody who's been very bad. <laughs> Somebody's been very naughty, and we must go go to their world and, and kill them. Though to be to be <laughs> fair, in this one, the the person in question doesn't actually seem to have actively murdered anybody. They do invade right. you a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But they don't. Yeah, they think, don't go off and murder any of your NPCs, for instance. 
Right. I mean, they're, they're generally generally kind of a shady individual, but you know, yeah, yeah. If if you uh, if, if you were eagle eyed and noticed in Drang Lake Castle that the nameless usurper have the same kind of armor set as an NPC, which granted can be tough to do, considering that they're all the red phantoms are all you know, you know have the saturation cranked up and it's harder to notice the difference between the armor pieces. But yeah, uh, they have the same outfit as another NPC, and that's kind of a that's 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 basically your indication of who to go of who to go deal with when you when you get the crushed uh, eye orb. You can also kill them ahead of time, but it counts as a sin. Yep, it's only a sinless kill if you if you do it via the orb. Right. Yeah, I want to say that I, want, I think Scholar fixed that because I want to say originally, uh, if it counted as you invading, and that was a sin also. And I remember at least, um, I don't know if it was, if it was th that NPC or a different case, where a lot of people like, you know, hey, I have a point of sin, the, the scaling on my lost sinner sword started going down, and did you do X? It's like, oh yeah, I guess I did. And, yeah. For a scholar and sin, whenever we do the Ivory King DLC, we'll have a fun <laughs> a discussion about that, of how From did kind of a kludgy uh, workaround for it. So this, th that's the downside of warmth, is when you're, when you end up, luring an enemy into it right and i just end up leaving him i think at this point mm -hmm. yeah he doesn't drop anything anything new and or, or do you just wait for the spell to fade i think yeah, yeah must, i wait for the, i think i wait for the spell to fade and then i try and uh yeah i tried to plunge attack him but i just landed on his head instead which is awesome that is, that is great i love that you can you can actually do that with certain enemies like in the the, the Dring Laic, uh bonus video, I have one of trying to do a plunge attack on a, a salamander and land on it and land on its back, and it has no problem with it until I try to leave, and then it flips out and kills me. <laughs> Which is more or less what happens with that one. It, he's perfectly happy with me just standing there. <laughs> and another soul vessel. How many of those have you gone through at this point? Um, I don't know. I've got two left in my inventory because I did another respec back into decks. Mm. I'm now using... <laughs> I finished the game using the Mirror Greatsword because mm. it's a, a scaling on decks greatsword. Now, this, this thing is, is interesting. This is one of the big changes between Scholar and the normal game. Right. In the vanilla game, you lit this torch and nothing particularly happened except for the lights right. came on. Yeah, exactly. And despite all the dire warnings, nothing, you know, nothing really dramatic happened. Mm -hmm. um, whereas here you get this message, and now you have a lot of red phantoms spawned in. Right. Just yeah, to make really the level like the more whole... interesting. Yeah, I, I really like the whole, like, when shadows rise thing. Kind of gives you the idea of, like, these, like, they're actually made out of darkness or something, you know, instead of just being regular enemies. They kind of play around with a similar thing in the, in the Abyss Covenant, you know, the from uh, Grandal's faction that we haven't uh, done anything yet with uh, on 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 in the LP. And yeah, was, you get the impression that, that those things aren't actually real. They're these uh, phantoms from you know the time long before. A lot of them are references to Dark Souls One. And yeah, I think I wonder if that's kind of a similar idea for. I mean, obviously we're overthinking it, and it's gameplay. It's like we want you to farm for the insolent set and get new drops from enemies, and to make the level have more have more stuff in it. So we're going to do this, but there's always that. It's like, hmm, you know, can, can we work with this? Basically, this is another area that that became a lot harder in Scholar. Mm -hmm. See here, you've got tombstones, you've got infinite little hollows. You've got some bigger gravestones that, that, if you get too close to them, spawn a ghostly sorcerer. Right. Um, what you don't have any over there is bells. Right. What you have in, sorcer in Scholar is all the bells. <laughs> yeah, you thought we were done with bells with the, the, the Belfry convention, uh, <laughs> convention, you know, uh, Covenant. But no, there is, there's plenty more... To, to come in here, and yeah, the fact that the you might now that the purpose of the the bells is to alert enemies to you. That's what the noise things generally do, and you can oh, you can probably guess the idea of having a permanent thing that lures enemies to you and infinitely infinitely respawning enemies. That is a very bad combo, as you might as you might surmise. <laughs> but that that's not really the the problem because these these guys aren't very tough. The thing is that the bells they wake up the ghost sorcerers. 
when a bell right. rings, every single tombstone will spawn. These tombs will spawn one of the Right. That's what I meant. It's like it's a combination of, of the fact, yeah, it does wake them up, but the ones that are already awake, it will call. It will just you know, you know, get them to you. So yeah, you. It's you know, not only does it does summon them all, but they'll like and dogpile you too if you're in an area with a lot of the those uh, monuments. And the thing is, is that the MPs, the monsters will try and ring the bells. You can ring the right. bells. Mm -hmm. um, now these guys, their sword acts as a catalyst. Right. Um, on its heavy attack. Mm -hmm. Though I did find, because I tried the um, sword of thorns, you know, the, the, the looking glass knight's sword. Yeah. That losing your heavy weapon to your heavy attack to you know, a special ability or a spell really reduces the utility of your weapon. You, you lose all that vers versatility that you normally have from having a, a varied move set. I agree. Yeah, like the the blue flame is a cool weapon, and it is awesome how you can have a sword in your right hand and you get a more efficiently cast. Like magic shield on your left hand, you know stuff like that. But yeah, the fact that you don't get that thrust anymore, for example, you know, it, it definitely makes it less useful as a as a sword. So the 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 minor blessing about this area is that once you've broken a tombstone, it stays broken, and not just broken for that death for your entire playthrough. Mm -hmm. Once you've broken yeah. one of the ghost spawning ones, not these little ones, these just pop up all the time like mushrooms. Right. <laughs> you might have also, if, you, if you're watching the footage back to back, at least, at least how I tried to cut it, that there are a lot more uh, tombstones in Mog's Way than there were in mine. I'd say there's probably about twice as many, you know, just around the floor, around the level in, uh, in Scholar. And it's pretty much just there to get you tied up and wasting time and wasting time and stamina attacking them to clear a path while you're being jumped by, yeah, by ghosts. And, and you know, I, to, yeah. to make it more likely for you to accidentally ring a bell yourself. But here right, we have right. a witch, and she's got a knight, a red phantom with her as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, um, I was uh, hadn't really hadn't really tried it, but I wouldn't be surprised at all considering that if you, lighting the lighting the flame in Scholar doesn't actually give you any more light <laughs> to just basically finish the level and then go back and light it and deal with the red phantoms then, but. For the sake of the viewers, you know, Mog took the took the hard way out. <laughs> it is one of the things I think, you know, lighting this is a really bad idea, but it's one of the big differences between Scholar and Vanilla. Right. Oh, I can never sneak up on this lady. <laughs> she always turns around just as I'm about to strike. Yeah, I, I think they have, they might have different, you know, aggro ranges or detection ranges or something based on the type they are. Also, yeah, I know, I know that. So I say, you notice she's blue like Agridane, so she's obviously the same sort of person, you know, the same people. Yeah, yeah, yeah he identifies uh, himself as a finito, just like the milfinito have that nito suffix in their names. Hmm. So it kind of gives you the idea that they aren't human, they were created by, created by him. Created by nito. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, who would have thought the, the first of the dead would be creating life instead of taking it, but that's kind of... They, they do that a lot, actually, in mythology, you know, the... You know, death is not only you know the ending, but also the the new beginning. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> that one last little uh, little pursuer orb, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I love how they actually have different uh, different like collision and everything for each individual. Uh, yeah, it's just a very fun spell. It's Unfortunately, what, their version it doesn't seem to do an awful lot of damage, though, compared to what it was like in Dark Souls One. This is what I was about to say. It's like, yeah, her ver yeah, it, it, it's been nerfed compared to one, and her version is weaker still. Which you know, thank goodness for that. I mean, it's like when you have three of them all spamming it at you. But <laughs> I think the I think for regular enemies, they have a lot less uh, magic adjustment damage than than like the bosses and mid bosses do. It seems like uh, when there there's an NPC that can actually invade you multiple times, which is which is pretty cool. And at the end of Aldia's Keep. And he does a lot more damage with his magic than uh, than these than these characters do. <laughs> and if Mog didn't keep knocking the the insolent uh, phantoms off off their deaths, we would find that they drop um, they drop a variety of stuff, everything from spices to fragrant branches to yeah the, the pieces of their armor set. 
no idea where, where that guy came from. I think he's over on the on the, the ledge to the left where the uh, where the CN knights used to be, and because that that was off to the the side you didn't see him. <laughs> yeah, but they basically the the maces of the insolent they use, and you can get that one. That's that's still a pre-placed uh, drop in the in the worst part of the level. You know, the, we've we've been dealing some tough parts. The worst is yet to come, <laughs> and uh, and it uses hexes and miracles, which is why they're capable of doing both. Of course, they're kind of cheating a little bit by casting them so quickly. Because all of the weapon uh, catalysts have a casting speed of uh, zero, basically. You don't get you don't get any bonus from the weapon to it, so they're all a lot slower than usual. So here's the second invasion of the Nameless Usurper. And right after I say only one NPC invades you multiple times, so here, here they are again. <laughs> I forgot about uh, Usurper. You know they're a little bit tougher from than last time. They do a bit more damage, but otherwise the same. It's still easily exploitable AI and uh, very short range uh, weapon. I guess they're trying to be uh, trying to be incognito because the character is capable of you know using magic and they don't in in the, these invasions. So who are they trying to usurp? Are they just trying to beat you to the throne? That's my theory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, usurp, usurp the crown. I mean, they, they invade in uh, the castle and the crypt, which is where Vendrick actually is. That's, that's what I figure. Yeah, I'm probably trying to get to the, probably trying to get the, uh, the King's Ring, you know, before, uh, before we can. Which, I guess, that's one of those weird things where the, the, the Souls games use the, the mechanic of, of, an, of an invasion and everything. Sometimes to represent you know what it is you know in in game game mechanical terms like somebody you know who's actually invading your world sending their phantom in but sometimes they use that to represent somebody who is actually there and like uh, like Agdane for example it's not summoning his phantom you're actually getting the guy to help you out and and yeah I don't know <laughs> so yeah we don't know if this time is, actually... is wibbly wobbly. We don't know right. if... <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the only thing I can think of is that perhaps things like the King's Ring only exist in one reality. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, whoever owns it, owns it everywhere. Yeah. So she, yeah, so that, that... the Usurper can't... Uh, if you get the King's Ring before the Usurper does, that's it. You've got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could definitely be. And there are there are very few uh, NPCs that show up after or in the the King's Ring um, gated areas. There's one of them who kind of makes sense that they might already be there, and then there's you know one of them who who came the back way. You know, they were imprisoned there before. You know, uh, Vendrick locked locked the doors to keep uh, Nashandra from you know, getting getting into everything. Uh, speaking of Nashandra. Um, she has some different things to say as we get to certain breakpoints in the plot, so we'll be putting popping that in at the end of the uh, videos too. That's another thing that's pretty easy to miss if you're just playing along. Because why would you ever go back, you know, to talk to her? Uh, and this part. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so this well, first, part is fairly easy if you can remember where you're supposed to go. Oh, not this right. part. This part's okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. This part just has the yeah, invasor. We... Two sets of swing doors mm. and guns. So I was say, that's a, right. I was say, that's, that's the first uh, tricky part. You've got the two, the two great shield uh, saloon knights um, in the way, and they can they actually can block uh, magic with their with their shields. Yep, as they're doing now, the doors opening. <laughs> I said that was that was pretty pretty well timed though, getting close enough to uh, to get their attention while also getting the getting the magic ready. Only problem is, is they can only take the full damage once and with, with that big magic nerf that it didn't work quite as well as planned, but still got their attention, still got them half killed, so that should make the rest of the job easier. And right. they'll, they'll get each Backing way, way down that corridor is difficult because of the curve. Right, right. Yeah, the, uh, I, I don't know if we, if we mentioned it, but the, the great shields, the dual great shields these guys use are actually the only great shields you can power stance. And they they do they do that that slam together attack that that they do to finish their combos. It's and that's another one too that you know it's like a lot of people have a variety of opinions. Let's just say on, on Dark Souls too, but I really do like the unique weapons and move sets they tend to have for for things like that. 
and a lot of people won't ever get to see it because you have to get two fairly rare drops, you know, of two different uh, shields. <laughs> but it kind of makes sense that they put it in because obviously they've already done the animations for the, en mm -hmm. for the enemies, so there's no reason not to right. let the players do it. True, true. <laughs> 